So in a previous video, we started studying the kinematics of a wheel rolling without slipping. And our test case was a bicycle right here that was moving with a speed v. Let's write it down here. So speed v in the i hat direction. I hat's horizontal. And what I asked was, what are the velocity? You know, given given that velocity of the bike, that is velocity of the frame of the bike. What are the velocities of the points that I've drawn here? A, B, C, and D on the wheel. And in that previous video we did a lot of calculations that involved cross products. What I'd like to do is redo those calculations but not with the cross products. Do it in a way that's perhaps a little more intuitive and a way that uses the concept of relative velocity in a more qualitative way. I'll say it that way. So our starting point is this expression right here. So let's say I choose some point on the wheel, any point on the wheel. I'm just going to call it point P. And we can say the velocity of point P is equal to the velocity of the hub. I'm going to call it the hub, this point right here, H. So that's the velocity of hub plus the velocity of point P relative to the hub. All right, when I think about the velocity in this way, I'm going to start drawing some pictures. So my first picture is going to be the wheel. The wheel has the hub at the center point H and we know this hub it's attached to the frame rigidly so and since the frame is translating the frame itself is not rotating every point on this frame has to have the same velocity so if the seat is going with a velocity V in the I hat direction so must the hub so that hub also has a velocity in the I hat direction so this is the picture I get again the velocity of the hub is v in the i hat direction. That's this part of the equation right here. Part now we have to draw the second part, the velocity of a point on the wheel relative to the hub. So in the second picture, I've got the wheel again, and I'm going to draw the points a, b, c, and d. So there's a, b's down here, c's up here, d's over here, and of course I'll also draw the the hub h, which is right there. Now the second term in our relationship for relative velocity is the velocity of the point on the wheel relative to the hub. Now we know that this wheel, probably just from experience, as the bike is moving forward, the wheel is rotating clockwise in this case. Let me just sort of draw that in. So the wheel is going clockwise. And if I ask myself, what's the velocity of a point on the wheel relative to the hub? Well, again, this means we're sitting on the hub watching these points move around. And as we sit on the hub, Moving with the hub, the points are just going around in a circle around the hub. So therefore at point A, it looks as though the point A is just moving upward relative to the hub, right? Relative to the hub, it looks as though point B is moving backward or in the minus i hat direction. Again, A and B are just going around the hub in a, in, a, in a clockwise manner. Point C is moving downward relative to the hub. D is moving to the right or in the positive i hat direction relative to the hub. Again, these points are just moving around in a perfect circle relative to the hub. And also let me label these things so that we're clear on what they mean. So this vector right here, that's a velocity of A relative to the hub. This is in a frame that's moving with the hub or moving with the bike. So velocity of B relative to the hub and C relative to the hub and D relative to the hub. And there's a few other things I want to observe here. Notice that all four of these points, A, B, C, and D, they all lie on the edge of the wheel. In other words, they're the same distance from the hub as each other. So each of them all are a wheel radius away from the hub. Because of that, each one of these relative velocities has to have the same magnitude, right? In polar coordinates, we found that we found that the velocity uh, has the term that looks like r theta dot. The wheel has its theta dot. You know, theta dot is theta dot for the wheel. It's the rotation rate of the wheel. The r is the radius. It's the distance away from that point. So the magnitude of the speed in each case is the same. So all these relative velocities have the exact same magnitude. And I'm going to call that relative velocity v rel. So the relative velocities all have that same magnitude. And further notice, each one of them in this relative frame are going around in a circular path. So those relative velocities are tangent to the wheel at each of these points, A, B, C, and D. So if I look at this relative velocity for point A, I can write it a little bit differently. In particular, I can call this velocity V rel in the positive J hat direction, right? It's this relative speed, the r theta dot, in the J hat direction, it's straight up. Similarly, for point B here, this is a V rel in the minus i hat direction right for point c it's going to be v rel in the minus j hat direction and finally for point d 
that relative velocity is v rel in the positive i hat direction. Now, depending upon the value of theta dot, this v rel is going to be either bigger or smaller, right? For 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 a fast rotation rate, uh, the v rel is going to be rather big. For a slow rotation rate, the v rel is going to be rather small. But you can't choose the rotation rate of your wheel independently, right? Our bike has a speed v, and remember what has to happen at the bottom down here where the rubber touches the road, right? In order for this wheel to be rolling without slipping, I need the velocity of that bottom to be zero. So roll without slip requires that VB, the velocity at the bottom here has to be zero. And what's velocity at the bottom? Well, it's not this thing. The velocity at the bottom is the sum of these two pieces, the velocity of the hub plus the velocity of the bottom relative to the hub. So I need to take this vector, there's a velocity of hub, and then this vector, the velocity of the bottom relative to hub, and those have to exactly cancel each other out. Fortunately, they're both in the i-hat directions, one in the positive i-hat direction, the other one's in the negative i-hat direction. So in order for them both to cancel out, we need that the v rel has to be the same as v. That's the only way for these to cancel each other out. So therefore, let me just revise my my labels accordingly. That is, for no slip boundary condition here, I need this v rel. I need it to just be v all by itself. So the relative velocity at the bottom is just a v in the minus i hat direction. v is the, the speed of the bike. Yeah, but remember all of these points, a, b, c, and d, they have to have the exact same relative velocity. So if the bottom is v has the speed v, then the same, same must be true for points a, c, and d. So let's make those labels look right. So my relative velocity at point a is v in the j. My relative velocity at c is minus v in the j. And the d, I have v in the i, like so. These, these are what the relative velocities must be in order to satisfy that no-slip constraint at the bottom of the wheel, point B. All right, so now in my, my drawing so far, I have the, those two terms on the right-hand side of this relative velocity expression. So first of all, I have the velocity of the hub, and then I have velocity of various points on the wheel relative to the hub. And to get the velocity of those points in a, an inertial frame, a frame that's not moving with the bike, all you do is you add these two pieces together. So I'm going to draw a third picture over here. So there's my wheel, there's my various points on the bike, and now all I have to do is add. It's really that simple. We'll start with point B because that's the simplest. At point B, I've got the velocity of the hub and then the velocity of the point B relative to hub. And both of these were by design to be to exactly cancel each other out. So I've got no velocity whatsoever down here at point B. Let's jump up to point D because I think that's easier. At point D, I've got the velocity of the hub, which is V in the I hat direction, and I've got the velocity of point D relative to hub, which is also going to be V in the I hat direction. Therefore, my velocity at point D, that's going to be twice V in the I hat direction. There's the velocity of point D, and that's exactly what we had before, right? If the bike is going 30 miles per hour, then there's point D on top of the wheel, that's going to be going 60 miles per hour. It's twice the speed. Again, in a positive I hat direction. Let's go to point A. At point A, we have a V in the I, and we also have a V in the J. So this produces a velocity that's at an angle of 45 degrees. So again, a V in the I hat direction and a V in the J hat direction. There is that vector, the velocity vector, at point A. It's the, this is the exact same thing we got when we did when we calculated velocities with the vector cross products. This exact same thing. Notice that this velocity is not tangent to the wheel at this location because the path isn't tangent to the wheel, right? The, the wheel is spinning, but the whole wheel itself is also moving forward. So that is tangent to that path of point A on the wheel. Yeah? All right, let's go to C next. So at C, we've got... Uh, velocity hub again we got it moving to the right in the i hat direction with a speed v and we also have this component downward minus v in the j hat direction so again we're going to have a velocity that's at an angle 45 degrees and this time the velocity vector looks this way right it's to the right and down at an angle 45 it's a v in the i hat direction minus minus is that clear minus v in the j hat direction and those are my velocities again this is exactly what we got when we did this through the cross product what we have is that these velocities on the point 
are equal to the velocity of the hub, or this reference velocity, plus the relative velocity. And that's what we get. 